So we'll do these two questions together because they are really related to each other. They use the same law of physics. Um, the calculation process is actually quite similar for both of them. So for both of these questions, really what you need to use is Gauss's law that we are covering this week. Gauss's law gives you this relationship which um, I think uh, for a lot of people, including myself, at first sight, it looks uh, weird is not the right word. It looks so esoteric. I mean, I, I think it's easy enough to make a sense of what it says. This is what it says. It says that the net flux out of a closed surface or using a little bit of a calculus notation, the integral over a closed surface and what you're integrating is this quantity, electric field, dot product with uh, infinitesimal area element. And if you recall back to the definition of electric flux, well, this is flux and you're just calculating over some closed volume. That closed volume may be a cube or it may be a sphere, it may be a cylinder, it may be an arbitrary shape, but uh, what's important is that it has to be a closed um, surface. Gauss's law relates this mathematical quantity to the total enclosed charge, Q enclosed. And there's a, a coefficient that relates them. There's um, a few different ways of <laughs> writing the coefficient that also depends on your unit system. We are still using SI unit system, but I'm going to use this particular combination of coefficients. 4 pi times Coulomb constant. Or if you really want, uh, you could also write this as Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Permittivity of free space, that's more common. But let me stick with the Coulomb constant. So this is what Gauss's law says. And in terms of doing math, um, once you realize you should use Gauss's law, you're kind of done because um, the question is telling you this. It's telling you what the net electric flux out of your um, your closed surfaces, your cubical box or your spherical surface. The question already gave you the net flux. In other words, it gave you your left-hand side here. And it's uh, asking you for the total charge or the net charge, which means the same thing. Well, that's this quantity on the right-hand side. So all you really have to do is take your net flux divide out this uh, coefficient, then you get your Q enclosed. And since everything is a nice SI unit, um, the units should work out to be uh, Coulomb. And um, I mean, yeah, so, you know, this says Coulomb here, but Coulomb constant also has Coulomb in there somewhere. And when you combine everything, it should end up in Coulomb. And to a sense, yeah, yeah, that's it. There's no more to this question than that. So let me just do the calculation, show that that is the answer. Q enclosed is this net flux given in each question divided by 4 pi of oh, Coulomb constant. Uh, did I write down QB? No, Q, I did write QE. QB would be Boltzmann constant, QE. Um, let me do this calculation in Wolfram Alpha so that I don't have to look up Coulomb constant. Just because <laughs> I'm lazy. Um, so it's going to be flux. So for question 9, 3E3, three uh, let me type in the units so that Wolfram Alpha will work out the units for us. Newton times meter squared per Coulomb. That's the flux divided by 4 pi Coulomb constant. Then you get an answer in, uh, oh, in micro Coulombs. That's exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't even have to do power of the conversion. Uh, so 0 0.266. 0 0.266. Micro Coulomb. Let me do the exact same calculation for uh, for question 10. 
So that would be uh, different flux. 8.1 times 10 to the power of 4 times the unit divided by 4 pi Coulomb constant. And I get the answer again in microcoulombs, 0 0.717. seven microcoulomb and let me put in the answer show that they are correct and uh and i will say the piece i would need to say so in, in terms of doing the calculation this is a super easy question to do the calculation with there's really one formula you plug in the numbers too and and you're done it's uh, uh it's exactly the kind of question sometimes students ask me for at least that's what i imagine when they say oh i just need to know the right formula to plug in the number two hey here it is uh, this question has a formula you can just plug in the number two and you're done now the reason i don't want to just to leave it there is um i mean if all that's there is plugging in numbers I know you know how to do that. Like I don't have to ask you who more questions to figure out if you can plug in numbers. And <laughs> if you're doing it the late way, like I'm doing here, then like there was barely any work here. So plugging numbers into formulas, that's not where the value is. And I hope uh, as you're doing this question, you come away with uh, one or two senses. Uh, or maybe both. <laughs> One might be um, maybe a feeling of loss, as in, um, what did I just do? Uh, the calculation that I did, what did it mean? I hope you wonder that. Um, and, and that, um, and I hope you wonder that, and I hope you hang on to that, because um, if you are feeling like you are lost a little bit, even as you are plugging the numbers into the correct formula and getting the right answer, then um, that that kind of sense of loss, it's, uh, it's coming from the right place. Because um, you would only feel the sense of loss if you are trying to connect to what you are calculating to something that's physically meaningful. And... Um, so, so for, to those of you who may be feeling that feeling of loss, I want you to hold on to that. And um, the, the second thing would be, I, I don't know, um, kind of realizing just how simple this calculation is. There is even this um, uh, info, piece of information that's given that we are not using. Because for the purpose of using Gauss's law in this way, I don't need to know. I don't need to know what surface you are integrating over. All I need to know is the total quantity that you have calculated and, um, and knowledge that disconnects to the enclosed charge. So there, I think this ties into the first uh, um, feeling that I was pointing to, which is... Um, that in using Gauss's law in this way, there are steps that we are skipping and that we are allowed to skip. Um, kind of detailed geometric consideration that you might normally have to do, you can skip it. Um, if uh, all you are wanting to find is addressed uh, uh, with the Gauss's law, if all you are wanting to find is enclose the charge, you don't need to know the details of geometry. All you need to know is the net flux. So there's that sense of <laughs> simplicity there. And um, and this isn't really why we introduce Gauss's law. In the application of Gauss's law, what we are interested in is the flux. Uh, sorry, what we are interested in is the electric field. And going from knowledge of flux to the electric field, that takes more work. And that's what you see in lecture. That's what you see in some of, some of the questions you do in this problem set. And, um, and that's really the practical utility of Gauss's law because of which we take a week uh, covering Gauss's law. And, and it's a kind of an abstract mathematical reasoning that doesn't come up so much um, in these lower division level courses. 
I think the closest thing that I've seen in other classes outside of electromagnetism that I've seen that resembles the kind of thing we see with the Gauss's law is um, what I remember. <laughs> so this is one of the, so I was a, a math and physics double major. And there are some math classes that <laughs> never made intuitive sense to me. And I think it um, connects to the way Gauss's law does because there's a singularity and all that. Um, for those of you who take maybe upper division math classes and maybe take a class called complex analysis, um, which uh, deals with um, calculus of complex functions, there is a, something called residue theorem. And residue theorem, to this day, the way I understand it, kind of feels a lot like what Gauss's law says. It connects um, uh, some, I think, a line integral in the complex plane to, um, to the strength of a singularity that's enclosed within that line. And the sad thing is, um, I was a better physics major than math major. So that complex analysis and residue theorem, none of them ever really made sense to me. But um, what that residue theorem is important for, it's the basis of derivation of a lot of integration formulas. Um, so I, I think uh, this Gauss's law is quite similar in terms of application and intuitive connection that way, as in it's really difficult to make an intuitive connection to. Um, <laughs> so, so I want you to give it a try. Um, and at the end of the day, the practical use that this rather abstract uh, law finds is in uh, derivation of electric field formulas. So just want you to say that, that's why I'm doing this super easy question.